Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. Packard. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. Oh, man. They are yet members of the Los Angeles congregation. Amen. Um, so now I'll say good morning to everybody else. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Yeah. But at any rate, uh, <laughs> it's good to be here. Yes, it is. And to see you and to rejoice in God's work and God's blessings to us. In the book of Esther, the account of Esther's rise to Queen of Persia and of Mordecai's deliverance and rise to the second only to the king might be seen by some as a series of what they call it, coincidences. And others might attribute the events to what's known as providence. Um, providence is a um, theological term used to express the conviction that God worked out his purposes through natural processes in the physical and in the social uh, universe. In the world of cause and effect, in the world of cause and effect, there's no, there's no uh, hint of miracles, and uh, we need to be, uh, and I've got to put my glasses back on, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make the print big enough. Okay, so it says, in the world of cause and effect, there's no hint of miracles and no need to bring God into, uh, bring God up to explain what happens. And, uh, it says, in the natural universe, the most one can point to is coincidence. So, what a coincidence that Esther happened to be, uh, just, just, that Esther happened to be queen just when Haman tried to exterminate the Jews. There's a reason that she was queen in the way that she became queen. It wasn't an incident. It says, what a coincidence that the king couldn't sleep one night. One night he couldn't sleep because things were on his mind and he was worried. And a portion of the annals of his kingdom that were read to him recorded how Mordecai had uncovered a plot against him. You see, uh, Mordecai had uh, found out that two of his guards, or whomever they were, had tried to kill the king. And he told Esther, and eventually it got to the king. So he could not sleep, and he called for a, a reading of a portion of these animals in that particular part, and he realized something. So was that a coincidence? The story of Esther illustrates divine providence by identifying coincidences which led to the deliverance of the Jewish people from a plot to exterminate them. Haman wanted to exterminate the Jews because he was angry with Mordecai. Because this is a book about providence, God is not mentioned. God is not mentioned in the book of Esther. Yet the string, the string of coincidence lead so naturally to the deliverance is so striking that his activity is clearly implied. So the things that happen would show us and lead us to know and understand that God was involved. Believers can say that God arranged the coincidences. Unbelievers scoff because each event can be traced back to natural causes that fully explain what happened without a reference to God. So unbelievers in the natural world doesn't believe in God and has reasons and explanations for everything yeah. without God. There is no real explanation. The doctrine of providence holds that God quietly works through causes and effects in the natural world to supervise events. So what happens seems like it's natural, but it's not natural as we think about it. God is always there. The book of Esther shows how a series of coincidences combine to deliver the Jewish people from an early organized effort to exterminate the race, and that's still going on. There are those who are still trying to exterminate them, and God's hand is there with them, protecting them, keeping them. So what we learn from Esther is that God is always at work in the lives of his people. God is at work in our lives here every day, every one of us. 
The seeming coincidences that mark our lives are not simply products of cause and effect or of random change. The coincidences that mark our life are ordained by God and are intended for our good. You see, God wants us to have certain things, certain ways, certain attitudes, and so on. And so he brings about things to help us to come to where he wants us to. Esther was chosen as Xerxes' queen, and her uncle Mordecai aroused the hatred of a high royal official named Haman, and Haman determined to destroy Mordecai's whole race because he hated that one man. Mordecai enlisted Esther's help, and coincidentally, Xerxes honored Mordecai for a forgotten service, and you can read that in uh, Esther 6, 1 through 14. Esther revealed she was one of the race of Haman's body to exterminate, and Haman was hanged. And there's a reason for that in a way that it happened. It wasn't a natural occurrence. God's hand was always there. The first coincidence in this story is the fact that the queen Vashti refused to come to the king when he called. And so a process was set up that led to the divorce from her and the placing of Esther in a place where she was highly favored and she became queen. So we can look back and we can see that God is working all along. God's able to use the free acts and the uncoerced reasoning of unbelievers to shape events for his purposes. And that's what he did in this case. already mentioned the fact that those two uh, people plotted against the, queen, the king and the plot was started because of, of Mordecai. And the act, though unrewarded, unrewarded at the time, was destined to loom large in the future to the point that eventually Mordecai was made second in charge under the king over Persia. Our own actions and the responses to them become elements in God's providential plan. Whatever we do and however we do, God can change those and work them and make them come out the way he wants them to come out for our benefit and specifically things have done so that we can benefit according to God's plan. Frequently, God's purpose is on long range. That's what happened with uh, Mordecai. He wasn't rewarded at the time that he was he told what was happening with those two guards. But down the line, that night, the king couldn't sleep and he had that portion read of the animals with his uh, actions and so on. But then he came to realize that this man was responsible for him being saved. And so then came the reward. And Haman reacted to what he felt was uh, Mordecai's insult by determining to exterminate the Jews. He turned to the Orca to fix a day to attack the Jews. When the lot fell, supposedly by chance, on a distant day, far enough off to give Mordecai and Esther time to counter his plot. So even those things that he, they were doing, that this man was doing, to try to uh, determine when to attack the Jews. He thought it would be a good time, but God had already determined you're not going to do that. So he made sure that it didn't fall in a time that would not allow them to be uh, saved. God is always able to turn evil practices to his own good purposes, and we can see that in this world. We can see that in our own lives. Eventually, it came to the point to where Mordecai uh, began to talk to Esther about the problem, and uh, she didn't want to do it. But he said, who knows but that you have come to the royal position for such a time as this. So God's hand was always there working it out and bringing it to that point. Mordecai enlisted her aid, and it was clear to him that God had placed her in a strategic place to influence the king in favor of the Jews. And so we look at that, and even uh, Esther's hesitancy as she put off uh, the confrontation with the king when she invited him and others to, uh, to
to lunch or dinner with her uh, played a part in God's timing of the event. So everything worked together and the events happened. She spoke and told what was going on at the right time. And sometimes we wonder why things don't happen the way we want them or don't happen when we want them. And they don't because God has not had it that way. Right. So we need to wait for God's time. Yeah. That night at supper, the queen accused Haman of plotting against her and the people. The king ordered Haman's execution because he was furious on the very gallows he had erected to execute Mordecai. Yeah. The Jews were successful in defending themselves and Purim was instituted as a festival of deliverance. And Mordecai went on to achieve the second highest rank in Persia, which he used to aid the Jews. The plot Haman had against the Jews had not only been thwarted, but was turned around, so that its effects was to promote the welfare of God's people rather than to harm them. So things don't seem to work so right sometimes, but they always turn out good when we rely on God. And so uh, this is what I want you to do, and this is what we all should do. We should look back at our lives and see the things that have happened in our lives. It was only looking back that Esther and Mordecai could clearly see the hand of God in what uh, had happened to them. When they began to look back, they could see God's hand to bring them to where they were as a safe people. It's like that for us, too. It's been like that for me, and I'm sure it's been like that for you. I've looked back at my life, and I've seen things way, way back in my early years. And I've told you some of the stories of the war that showed that God was there. I don't have time to go over any of those or others. But recently, my wife and I were not involved in an accident because I did something at the traffic light that kept us sitting there while somebody was speeding to her they read right. right. So God looks out for us. Yes. So look back and examine the, co the co coincidences that set you on each new course, everywhere you go, everything you do. See how it happened. Why did it happen? Realize that God was at work in each one of them, even those which that sometimes might have seemed to be uh, painful to you. The doctrine of providence tells us that God is at work in the life of all of his people. God's activity may be hidden. Sometimes we can't see it. We just have to wake up and think about it. Look, but it's very real. Look back, and you'll see it in your life. I've looked back, and I've seen it in my life. Look back, and you'll find evidence of the constant love of our Lord. God's always here. He loves us. God is at work on your behalf right now. God is working for us to help us, to guide us, to teach us. Even being sitting here, God is doing something to help us. And through the coincidences, look at the coincidences of your life. So in Romans 8.28 it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And as my friend Mr. Crawford likes to say, God has brought us from a mighty long way. Yeah. Hmm.